All right, so what's the problem? Um, well, past research has shown, shown that worldwide university students are using and abusing prescription medication that's designed to treat ADD and ADHD. Um, and a lot of times, students are turning to these drugs to cope with academic stress. Um, past research has also shown that whether the medication is prescribed via phys a physician or obtained illicitly, a lot of times um, these students don't know uh, what the dangers or addictiveness are of these prescription medications. So as a little bit of background, past research has shown that um, alcohol has often been used with pre these prescription medications such as Adderall and Dexedrine in order to get kind of a high from, these, from the combination of the two. Um, however, SU is a little bit different because A, we are a dry campus, and B, because the culture is a little bit different here. There is a lot more academic pressure um, in southern Utah and in Utah in general. In addition, there's not as much alcohol consumption within the state of Utah compared to the locations that some of these other universities were that uh, these previous studies looked at. And there's three main questions we wanted to look at. First, what factors contribute to the stress that students face throughout the school year? Second, are these levels of academic stress associated with prescription drug use? And third, what is their percep perception of these medications based off of whether or not they've used it in the past? All right. So we hypothesize that academic and social pressures are a contributing factor to stress in students and that high levels of stress are associated with prescription drug use and other self-harm behaviors. The way in which we gathered our data is we distributed a 36-question survey in the fall semester of 2016. It was a random stratified survey, so it looked at um, an even sampling of the different colleges here at SUU. And from the survey, we received 1,255 uh, participants. And it was sent out um, between midterm and finals, which is a period of high stress for uh, university students. So we looked at levels of stress in students. Um, and you, as you can see from the pie chart, um, nearly 60% of students report either moderate to high or high levels of stress. Uh, in a preliminary study that we did last year looking at pre-health students, we saw similar levels of stress. And so with this study, we really wanted to compare uh, the different colleges and their levels of stress. Um, and so we saw that five of the six colleges reported um, moderate to high levels of stress with only one college reporting significantly lower levels of stress. So this figure that we're looking at right now is showing the answers that the respondents gave when we asked, what is the number one stressor that you are facing right now? And the one that blows all the others out of the water is required coursework, um, followed by finances and work. And it's important to point out, though, that they are, many of the students are facing all of these stressors. Uh, they face required coursework, they have family obligations, they're dating, they have work, they have finance problems, they're wondering what are they going to do once they graduate. They have all these things coming down on them as stresses, but in the end, the one that stands out to them the most is the academic coursework as their main stressor. Uh, we looked at levels of stress in students by gender, um, and this uh, this bar graph shows, goes from no stress, which is represented by blue, all the way to high stress, which is represented by red. Um, and female students are, show significantly higher levels of stress than their male counterparts. Um, we also looked at alternative genders, such as gender fluid and gender queer, and they, those students also reported higher levels of stress, um, but they're not compared here due to low sample size. One of the questions we wanted to ask was, um, are you using these medications that I mentioned earlier for stress reasons? <clears throat> and these medications are typically used 
to treat disorders such as ADD, ADHD, depression, anxiety. Uh, they're used as sleep aids. And for the SUU population, 15.7% said that they use these medications in order to cope with stress. And of the 15.7% that had used these medications, 80.9% said that they received it from a physician, and 15.3 of them said that they received these medications from family members and from peers. And when we look at this, there was an association between the stress levels and the use of these medications. And we saw that females tended to use these medications more often than their male counterparts. We also asked students if they had ever received counseling here while here at SUU. Um, and 15.4% of students had received counseling. Um, females were much more likely to have received counseling. And also we saw that as levels of stress increased, so did the likelihood of uh, students obtaining um, counseling, except for students who reported feeling no levels of stress, or no stress, um, and they also reported high levels of um, having received counseling. Going back to the medication use, we wanted to see what the perception of SU students are on the addictiveness of these medications. And we separate into two uh, graphs up here. The top is those students who have not used these medications in the past, and the bottom is those that have received or have used these medications. Starting at the top, those who have not used these medications, 41.8% of them had no idea, they had no opinion of how addictive they were. It's just something they haven't thought about, and it just wasn't part of their, their thoughts. But those that did have an opinion and had heard of these medications, more often, more of them thought that they had a moderate to high addictiveness level. Um, and then you look at, or, and then those who had not, or have used them in the past, more of them thought that there was no risk, low risk, or only a moderate risk of addictiveness with these medications. And so you can see the difference between those who had used it and those who had not used it in the past. Uh, we also looked at their perception of the dangers of these medications, and we saw similar results as those with the perception of addictiveness. Uh, those who had never um, used these medications more likely reported that they had no idea about the dangers of, of these medications. Um, and those who had taken these medications before were more likely um, to perceive these medications as no risk to low danger. The slide that we're looking at right now is what students reported doing to themselves or self-harm behaviors um, while they've been students. The column closest to us are those activities that 2 to 10 percent of the students have performed. The middle column is 10 to 20 percent, and the column furthest away from us, that is 20 percent and above. So the top four self-harm behaviors that students are performing here at SUU are contemplating suicide, reckless driving, denying themselves food and drink for purposes that are not related to religion, and banging their head. And through an order of probate, there was a strong, uh, there was a association between contemplating suicide, denying themselves food and drink, and levels of stress. And looking at, in the middle column at the excessive drinking to vomiting, and here in the last column, excessive drinking to unconsciousness, um, as we hypothesize, alcohol use is not as big of a part or doesn't play as big of a role here at Southern Utah University as it does in some of the other universities that similar studies have been performed. And one last thing we'd like to point out is the attempted suicide. Uh, when you look at the percentages, it doesn't seem like it's that high of a number, 7.5%. But it's important to remember that 7.5% represents 92 students here at SUU that attempted suicide in the past while they've been students. And that does not take into the account the students who uh, completed their suicide attempt and are no longer with us today. All right, so what are the conclusions that we came, with, came up with? Uh, the primary source of stress for students here at SUU is academic. Uh, we, we live in a culture with academic, high academic pressures and high uh, social pressures. Um, and females are a lot more likely to show higher levels of stress. 
Um, higher levels of stress are associated with uh, prescription drug use as well as they're more likely to receive counseling. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about the dangers and addictiveness of these medications. Uh, these medications are Schedule II drugs um, that are um, highly addictive and, and dangerous if misused. Um, and there's also a lot of self-harm behaviors that are associated um, with stress, including uh, suicidal thoughts being the highest. Um, and like we mentioned before, alcohol use is um, not as big of a factor here. Um, that just might be because students aren't using uh, these medications in association with alcohol to, to party. So what does this all mean? Well, undergraduate students, we face stress. And stress is a part of life. And as a college student, you're not going to be able to get rid of required coursework. That is part of your academic career. However, there are ways to cope with that stress when you're faced with it. And we need to be able to develop uh, long-term um, health programs here at SUU in order to help these students overcome the stress that they're faced with. We have amazing programs here already. We have CAPS, we have CAST, and we need to just continue to promote those programs so that students are aware that they exist and that they're aware that they are not alone and that there are better alternatives to coping with stress that don't require these self-harm behaviors that we've been observing. Um, and in, uh, in the future, we need to do more gender-specific studies to see um, how stress is related and associated to the various genders that uh, students as uh, associate themselves with. And so there's a lot that we can still go forward to do, but there's been a lot that has been learned so far. And these are the references that we use throughout the presentation, but we're open to questions now if any of you have any questions or comments you'd like to. Yeah. Um, in the back, yeah. Um, the college that had lower stress levels was the College of Business. Uh, we didn't look specifically to see why they had lower levels. Um, there's ideas as to why, but we had no scientific evidence to support any of those ideas right now. But it's something that we could look into in the future. Yeah, so the medications that we were focusing on were those uh, like stimulant medications, such as those that were treated treatments for ADD and ADHD. Um, and we asked uh, students uh, which medications uh, of those drugs that they used. And so they, there were some that were, let's see. There. Yeah, so we asked them about ADD and ADHD medication, anxiety medication, uh, antidepressants, and sleep aids. Yeah, and the medications that were most often identified, both in this study and in past studies, were medications such as Adderall, Dexedrine, Ritalin, which are all class two. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, sorry, one more. Um, we're saying that students are taking these medications because they have stress. And we need to make them aware that these medications aren't the best way to cope with their stress because they are addictive. And if they aren't used as prescribed by a physician, they can cause them serious health dangers. And so we just need to let them know that this, there's better ways. Yeah, obviously, um, these medications are, are great when they are used um, in, with a prescription from a doctor and they're used um, appropriately. Um, but we were looking at misuse and abuse of these medications.
Yeah, I don't think we, we looked at that. Um, so we didn't do the studies ourselves to look at how addicted they are, but through various pharmaceutical um, organizations, through the DEA, they're the ones that have determined that they are a class two drug. And these classes or the schedules that they put them are, they get those different schedules based off of how addictive they are, based off the studies that the various uh, organizations have performed in the past.